All right. We're going to switch out our desk right there. There are many games each night and an amazing play for each one of them. But only 10 are good enough to make the cut for our plays of the night. So let me introduce the newest member of our PPR Plus team. His name is Hogard. Dewan Hogard. Dewan, I raised you from, the, from a pup. Make me proud. I can do that. Thanks, Paul. Now is the time we will take a look at the top plays in the county. Did your team have what it takes to make plays of the night? We'll find out right now. Play number 10, LaQuintus. Chill Robinson is going to feel a chill on the bus tonight. That's Jacob Beeston who goes beast mode on the tackle. Play number 9, Santana's Zach Bright is going to find Landon Lazoya for the 21-yard touchdown score. Great play, you two. Hey, play number 8, Otay Ranch visiting Sarah. Watch out, Sarah Stefano Diamato. Here comes Otay's William Bobier to force the fumble. Nice play, young man. Play number seven, San Pasquale Academy's Josh Rice that drops back to pass, and it's Army Navy's Greg Elliott who comes down with the ball. I don't think that's who you were trying to get, young man, but it's all right. Better luck next time. Play number six, Poway's Gabriel Isaac is back to pass, but hey, that's LCC's Mike Arkins who gets in front of the pass and returns it 25 yards for the score. Hey, believe me, it's going to get better from here. Don't click away. Plays five for one are soon to come. Paul, back to you, my friend. Dewan, welcome to the team. Thank you for having you, me. You almost put that tear in my... I mean, when he came to me, he was just this tall. All right, it's time for the Pig Nation. Where you guys on the other side of the computer screen make your opinions known. This requires a helping hand. And since we couldn't find anyone better, <laughs> here's our Brandon Stone. Uh, Brandon, explain the uh, premise here. Here's what's going on, everybody out there. This is very, very crucial. All week, we've had a poll up on KUSI.com slash PPR for you, the viewers out there, the people behind the computer screen to vote on to let us know what you think. And Paul and I, well, we're going to have a little debate session now to, hey, think what you think about it. Let's go to question number one here, Paul, and it is, is high school football a better experience on natural grass or field turf? Paul, what do you think? Well, I, I know what it's better on. It's better on natural gas, Greg. God created football to be played on natural grass. Field turf, everyone's talking about how field turf is this, field turf is that. Field turf is almost as expensive as cutting the grass. The game was supposed to be played on natural grass. Well, I'm going to give you this. God did create grass, but we've grown, we've multiplied, and we've gone to the field turf. Don't you like it sitting there on a, on a Friday night, everybody, and the light shining, and it's bouncing right there on the field, it's glowing. It's beautiful. It's environmentally safe. Pets can go on it. You can keep a field green all year round. Everybody can play on it, not just the football people. This is economically safe. We got to have the field turf. Uh, Brand, I think there would be some people talking about uh, uh, environmentally safe uh, when the bacteria build up on the, uh, the, the plastic grass. Well, hey, we, we made our opinions yes. known. What do the viewers say? You, the viewers, say it's. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, Have I told you people much at home how I love you right, right. now? All right, I told so you. The, let's, our next question is, should conference alignment be based on geograph geography or location? I say uh, it's actually enrollment or yes. location. So I say it's enrollment. Schools of similar size should play schools of similar size. I think it's pretty much a no-brainer. That's the way the CIF is doing it. Uh, how could anyone be different from that? No-brainer is your take, maybe. But all I remember is this. When I was in school, I didn't care whether the rival school next to me had two people or 2,000 people or 200,000 people. All that I cared about was getting out there on the field for 60 minutes and destroying them. And I think that's what all the people in this county care about, too. So we want to play who is next to us. Yes, in some cases, we probably shouldn't have Foothills, Christian, Poway in the same league. But hey, if you're next to me, we want to take care of you. All right. So what does the Pig Nation have to say? Who's right on this one? Uh, <laughs> this is a pretty good day for me. Hey, hey, Mr. Harris, and can we have a little more of a drummel or a kazam or something when, when we whoosh. announce the winner? How about a swoosh? <laughs> okay, how about a drum? All right, which 2009 CIF, right CIF champion, this, moving on to our next question, has the best chance to repeat in 2010? Obviously, our five uh, section champions last year were East Lake, Oceanside, Cathedral, Mission Bay, Francis Parker. This was going to be a week one question. It was a little more difficult to answer then. I'm still going to keep my answer the same. I think in these kind of situations, you don't go so much based on the team. You go based on the coaches. John Carroll has done it before. John Carroll has a history of doing it. I know they had the tough loss, but that loss was against a tough opponent at their place. I still say Oceanside is going to be the team to look out for. 
You know, I'm going to give you credit for that one, and I'm going to stay with what I picked originally in week one, even uh, though they're even though it's now, yeah, good, even though they're now this. 0 and 2. I'm still going to stick with Cathedral because they have all this talent coming back. You talk about coaches. Hey, John Carroll is a great coach. So is Mr. Doyle. He's a great coach too. Same crew is back. This team's just only two years off of winning a state title. I mean, what, what do you have to miss in this group? They have a little bit of problems now. They're going to get them together. A little more practice. I think they'll get it figured out. All right, and our last and final. You're well, wrong on that one. Oh, by the way, what, what you the people say? How about a? <laughs> well, look it. I got it right. Oceanside, but with a whopping margin. So we're, it's still two to one, you. by the way. Thank you. Just want you to know. We're gonna have to work on our special effects in the audio room. This is the uh, this Mr. Is the first week. It's Mr. First week. Harris, this is your chance to shine. Okay, <laughs> which silver pigskin winner had the best high school football career? We have two choices. One is Reggie Bush. One is Dylan Baxter. Uh, do I go first here? You can go first, man. Well, I love them both. They're both good kids, regardless of uh, recent headlines. But my my take on it is, I think you're gonna. I think it was Dylan Baxter. I think the numbers. Reggie just didn't have Dylan Baxter's numbers. Now Reggie was a great. There. I'll tell you what. I'd like to have them both on my team. <laughs> but if I had to choose between them, I'd pick Dylan Baxter. I think he. I think history and time will will prove me right. The kid can throw the football. I never saw Reggie throw the football. He could do everything Reggie could do. Maybe he wasn't as fast, but was a little bit stronger and, and even more versatile with the fact that he could throw the ball. So I say Dylan Baxter, you say. Well, first thing you come out here with, with is he can throw the ball. Let's not discount Reggie Bush's ability to throw the ball. I think there's some video coming pretty soon of Reggie Bush throwing a very impressive ball. And hello, he had Alex Smith to be the quarterback. He didn't necessarily have to throw the ball anywhere. Oh, oh, Look you, at the, oh, you're saying if we run this tape long enough, we're going to see pictures of Reggie Bush throwing a football. I guarantee you. How far away? Now. All right. Ding! Oh, oh get out of here. Dylan Baxter here. throws it on a frozen rope. I could have I shot that twice with a shotgun. Get out of All here. All right. So, this is, this is not Duck Hunt. Pig there is no Nintendo here. The best high school football career, the Pig Nation says... Well, all right, that was close. You know what? Uh, I'm not going to even argue that one because, as, uh, you know, that's I think that was that was the margin of the presidential. But you know line. what? Uh, the Baxter has a lot to learn from Bush on uh, both sides of the field. So let's see how that goes too. All right, which current San Diego Charger would make the best high school football coach? Uh, me? Go ahead. I think it's a no-brainer, Philip Rivers. I've seen him at the you see the video of him at uh, football camps. Kids respond to him. He obviously has uh, playing a quarterback at the NFL level. He has complete command of the game. And the fact, look at those kids mesmerized by the pearls of wisdom coming off his tongue. Philip Rivers will, maybe will be a head coach if uh, if he chooses to. If anyone who went to that Philip Rivers camp is watching, I remember shooting this, and uh, they had a little quote, a little chant that says, "Is everybody happy?" H A P P Y. Oh, it was a great camp, and it's hard to go against Philip Rivers. But let me just give a case for uh, Nick Hardwick. This is a very uh, very serious individual, knows a lot. Centers are the smartest people out there you know maybe you give quarterback knows a lot but the center they're the ones who keep the pace i'll, I'll give credit to, to luis castillo too he he may be a gm someday the way he's going um i'll give all these guys credit i think that maybe the total will, will beat him maybe all right all right the total of them will beat philip rivers uh, basically you took the rest of the field and turns out i was completely right <laughs> philip rivers whopping 47 percent of the viewers going with philip rivers i believe that is the end of our first ever pig nation Definitely not the I last. I think this is going to be a very lively debate. I think you're poorly man, uh, th poorly armed. I think you're out, a little outgunned, you know, going up against the mighty pig. You know, everybody, everybody had to start somewhere. All right, you might want to bring I get a, a friend a good next time.